Okay, I figured maybe that last video I did was a little tedious, so I decided to go ahead and um, create a sped up version of something kind of similar. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm testing my XP Pen Artist 15.6 workflow, and um, I'm starting out with a pencil test. Um, as you saw a minute ago, I took the shape of a head and just moved the the um, strokes from position to position in order to um, block in the motion. There's no particular reason behind this um, animation other than to just create four keyframes and test the workflow of going from a pencil test to a uh, you know fully inked and colored animation. So in order to be able to see better what I'm doing, I went ahead and used a different color um, for the um, features of the face. And these strokes are all going to get deleted later anyway. Um, so it's good to be able to see what you're doing. So right now, again, the basic shape of the face, it doesn't really change much from keyframe to keyframe. So I went ahead and just uh, just move the strokes, and that automatically creates keyframes in Blender, which is pretty convenient. Um, so again, if if you're someone who's wondering why not do the the coloring process right here in Blender, um, you know it's basically just a lot easier to do it in in Krita. Uh, I've tried drawing shapes of color. In a, in a layer underneath my outlines. I've also messed around a lot with creating strokes that have the color baked in. That's the most, would seem like the most obvious way to do it, obviously, in Blender. Um, but this entire animation from pencil test to finished colors, shadows, the whole thing, took about 40 minutes. So, I'm feeling pretty good about that that workflow. Now what you're actually seeing here is sped up four times. So I'm just talking over the the sped up video. And again, I don't want to make any claims to this being anything great as far as you know, there's no story here. Uh hopefully pretty soon I'll be getting into videos where there is a little bit more story behind the animation, but right now I'm just just still getting the the workflow figured out. So I felt pretty satisfied with this. I put a little bit of, uh, I guess you wouldn't call it squash and stretch, but you might call it, um, you know, the hair evolves a little bit. Now, when I was going in and um, cleaning out my keyframes, I sort of messed up here. And um, the, the inked frames that are over top of the original sketch got out of sync with the, the blue line sketch so for that reason I had to go in and clean up the keyframes but now basically I'm it's just inking time what I did today was I set up hot keys on my XP pen artist 15.6 tablet screen so that actually for blender what I've chosen to do is I've made one uh, one of the hot keys the D key so that I can go into drawing mode and then immediately below that is the escape key so that way I can I can draw and then jump out of drawing mode very, very quickly. Um, and then the next two keys are, are shift and control, which I use with my um, stylus middle mouse button, if you will, in order to be able to zoom and pan quickly. Other than that, I'm using uh, a keyboard that is nearby. Um, when I did this video, I think I might have mentioned before, I'm not sure if I did, but my laptop battery died. And uh, so it does, as we move towards the, the end here in the, in the coloring process, um, I did have to jump from an earlier to a later stage, but I mean, you get the idea. So this is actually right here why, one of the reasons why Blender is really good for doing um, ink work is, is that you can go in and actually sculpt the strokes. I mean, if you're, if you're familiar with Blender, or blender grease pencil, you probably already knew that, but 
in practice, it can be it can be a, a, a good time saver, especially if you have the elements of your characters broken up into layers and or colors so that you can sort of isolate what you want to grab at any point in time and sort of protect the rest from being grabbed and just make quick modifications. So, but this, this part of the process has been a lot of fun because I have not been able to get anywhere near the level of precision using a standard um, graphics tablet. Uh, and Lord knows I've tried. In fact, even to the point of developing entire workflows around the idea that you're just going to do it all with a mouse using a lot of polylines and this sort of thing. But I can definitely say that with the tablet screen, uh, being able to, I should stop and say, I'm, I'm adding these lines here so that in the upper right-hand corner, you can see that from the camera view, uh, you see the guy's belly and essentially you can, um, you're going to have closed shapes. So I'll be able to fill that in, in Krita. So then I go into Krita um, and I, import the animation frames from Blender. And so that's going to give me all of my ink lines. And then in a, uh, the layer below is where I do my fills so that the fills are allowed to expand a little bit. And uh, you can see there, some of the shapes aren't completely closed. And so I have to go in with the brush. It's really very quick. You just kind of look, you can see where there might be a gap, like right there on his arm, you can see there's a gap. And once in a while, it can get frustrating if you if you miss uh, a gap. See, there's where my battery started. It warned me I had eight minutes. Well, when Windows tells you you have eight minutes, you really have about two. <laughs> this is what I found out today. So uh, you would think at 50 years old, I would have known that by now. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so this is just the process of going through and... and um, filling in the the color and again in a in a lower layer the other reason to put it in a lower layer is that the the layer of frames that are brought in from blender obviously there's a keyframe on every single frame because because you actually have 60 individual images here that you're coloring in but the nice thing with krita is if you put a key in a different layer then you only have to add another keyframe um where the art has actually changed and that coloring is sustained. I, I hope I'm being clear here because there's only four poses. There's 60 frames, but there's four poses. I only actually have to do the filling in a total of four frames. And now what I did was I just added another layer above and you want to make sure you click on the far right side. You can see the little alpha key. You want to click preserve alpha and that causes the shadows layer to respect the um, the alpha of the layers below. And that way you, there's no possibility of accidentally coloring outside the lines, which is really super cool. Um, okay, we're getting to the end of the line here and uh, ink, paint, and color. And I think we're just about done. <laughs>